Hi, Franklin County, Diana Zinal here from the Franklin County Chamber of Commerce, continuing with our interviews. And today's one of my favorite people, Claire Higgins from uh, Community Action, our, our neighbor in our office, we actually share some space. Um, and of course, someone that I you know respect and, and, and adore and have for a long time. Um, so we've been talking to, to different um, businesses and organizations from Franklin County about how COVID has affected them directly. And I can only imagine that there were there were just, you know, there were ways that this affected community action just across the board. I mean, you might want to tell, I'm sure most people are familiar with the things community action does, but you do a lot. There might be people that aren't familiar. So maybe talk a little bit about that, but then, um, yeah. you know, how, uh, yeah, how you had to change. So first of all, thank you, Diana, for asking us to be part of this. And uh, we're, you and I have a mutual admiration society. So that's always nice to have a meeting of that group. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, community action is um, a large employer in the Valley. We employ over 300 people. Uh, we have sites up and down the valley. Our furthest away from Franklin County is our Head Start sites in Westfield and Agawam. And we reach all the way up into, you know, all the way up this direction, right? To, and, and our roots are in Franklin County. We then joined with Hampshire County Community Action. So 300 people across the valley, um, programs that meet the needs of low and moderate income people because we were um, chartered by the federal government to be an anti-poverty agency to work to uh, alleviate the challenges of poverty. So um, our programs fall into really two major buckets. One is programs that support children and families. That includes our family center right here on Federal Street in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. uh, our Head Start and early learning sites, which are throughout Franklin and Hampshire County and Westfield. Aguam area and those um, in Franklin and Hampshire County include part day part year programs or school year programs and then five sites that are full day full year for people who are working or have other needs to have their children out of home um, early education and care. Um, and then WIC which is a nutrition support one of the most effective early intervention nutrition support uh, programs that the federal government runs that serves about I think 2,000, we're up to, uh, I think we're close to 2,000 families. Actually, we're, we're about 1,800. I'll start again. So WIC, <laughs> WIC is a, a, a children's program that helps um, pregnant women and children. We serve about 1,800 families in, in Franklin, Hampshire County. Um, so that's the children and families programs. There's, it's a broader portfolio than that, but those are the main main pieces of that. And then we have community programs that serve the community. That includes, um, this is a bridging program. Our youth programs serves adolescents up to age 24. We can do workforce development with them. So we do a lot of workforce development programming, uh, diversity support with young people, including LGBTQ youth and youth of color. And then um, we run Harmon Personnel, which is part of our youth yes. and our workforce development programming that helps place people into community businesses. And we can offer support for those um, workers who are transitioning into to a workforce, into the workforce. Work with the Franklin County Jail on, on helping people who are coming out of the jail to find and retain employment and work with the Department of Youth Services to do the same thing. That's our workforce. Um, we do fuel assistance and energy work with people throughout the pine, really throughout the west, throughout Western Mass. We're kind of, if people have used Mass Save, we're Mass Save for low-income people. We go in mm -hmm. and do the audit and help button up their house. We can help people fix their furnaces with a federal program. And then, of course, we run fuel assistance, which helps fill the tank and keep people warm and safe in their home. It by no means pays all of people's energy bill during the winter, but it defrays the cost of energy so that people can stay safe and warm in their homes. Uh, a benefit not just to those people, but quite frankly to the community because we want people to be safely warming their homes and not using yeah. inappropriate ways to keep your house warm. And then um, um, the third thing is we run a broad portfolio of programs that we call community services, and they do uh, really a wide variety of things. We have phones that are staffed every day, and I'm going to come back to this, that people can call up and ask really ask for help with anything. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
come back to that because the anything is what I really want to focus on today. But we also are the the HUD designated continuum of care, they call it, to help people who are homeless in Hampshire, Franklin, and Berkshire County help create the system that will help people out of homelessness and into housing. Mm -hmm. um, we um, run a program. Uh, we also work with homeless and unaccompanied youth uh, through a state contract working in, all, again, all three of those counties. Um, we have a free voluntary income tax assistance program, which a number of chamber members have volunteered for over the years, mm -hmm. helping people file their taxes without paying for that service, which means every dollar comes back to the community as in reinvested in businesses in our community. And it maximizes mm -hmm. how much earned income tax credit our filers can get. Greenfield Savings Bank has done uh, just a, uh, been a great partner in our revolving loan fund that we have. It's up to $500 short-term revolving loan fund where people who have a short-term emergency could come and get some help with a little money. And then we can help them uh, also figure out how they can pay it back without uh, getting themselves into a deeper hole, sort of work on fi financial stability work with them. Um, we run a great resource that I hope all of the chamber members know about called Look for Help. It's an online service directory where you can mm -hmm. go. You know, the neighbor that you know needs some help with food or something else, you can go look it up on Look for Help and find out how they can get that kind of assistance. And we run a food pantry on Osgood Street here in, in Greenfield, and we have a food pantry in Shelburne Falls at the Cal Gym. Now, because of the pandemic, uh, the, the uh, Osgood Street food pantry had to close. We didn't have enough space to have people be uh, physically distant from each other while they were doing the service. So the Greenfield Public Schools were a great partner and allowed us to set up a pantry in the Federal Street Schools cafeteria. And we're doing brown bag out the back, out the front door there on Federal Street. People drive up and we put the food in their car and they drive away. That's an interesting, um, that was an interesting challenge because um, uh, many of our volunteers that worked in the food pantry weren't able to work. We made a decision that we had to be careful about our volunteers. Many of them who, not all, many of them are fine, but some of them were uh, had some physical challenges or other compromising conditions, and we decided we needed to be prudent about that. Fortunately, our federal our federal funders and our state funders, we had contracts with them, and they continued to pay us. We redeployed people over to the pantry to assist with food distribution. We we're actually able to redeploy people to the Northampton Survival Center as well to help them with their food distribution. And I think we might even have at the Amherst Survival Center. So, so here we are today, right? Um, we've been doing, uh, our staff is working remotely. So I wanna come back to the phones being covered every day. Every day I have people covering these phones. We have people who are answering the phone. People need help about a wide variety of things. They're working with them remotely to talk to them about what kinds of help they need. That's in the rest of our programs, people are talking to their clients, you know, on the phones all the time and they're delivering diapers and they're delivering groceries and they're doing those kinds of things. So, but for the folks here at the community services, the community resource advocates, we call them, they are taking these phone calls, finding out what people need, and then connecting them with the resource. A newly unemployed per employed person, they can help them do a food stamps application right on the phone. A newly right. Person, they can help them think about what their health insurance choices might need might look like. We know that there are you know upwards of 20 to 25 percent people in, in people in franklin county have applied for unemployment and are, are on are, are on unemployment those people have less less money than they had right now there's a moratorium on evictions but that's going to be lifted we're here to help people get ahead we have some money that we fundraised to help people with things like rent or back utility bills that aren't covered by a state or federal program. So we really hope employers, if they know their employees are struggling, tell them to call us. Tell them to go to look for help at look, L-O-O-K, number four, help. And you can find us right there to look to see, you know, to call us on the, uh, to see if you can get some help from us. At, and we're, we're here to do that. Um, the, our, our phones, as I said, are staffed every day. Our resource advocates then help people think about what do they need to do to help stabilize their finances for the short run 
And then, of course, longer term, as the economy starts to come back, hopefully people will be recalled to their job. But mm -hmm. if we can help them uh, connect through Harmon or something else with a temp job to help them think about how they work their way back into the into the workforce. This is, yeah, it, is that all you do? <laughs> it's crazy yeah. how it, it the you know the people are finding themselves with needs that haven't had needs before, right. uh, and you know, but community action has always taken this such a broad approach to how you help because it's not just help with food or help with employment. You know, there's so many different things that people need when they're when they're finding um, you know that that their income isn't meeting um, you know what they they need to live on with like you mentioned rent fuel diapers you do this huge diaper drive. Um, every in, year that's in, in partnership with the Franklin County United Way, who's been a great partner on the diaper yes. drive. Yes, yes. Well, and, and you know, I talk a lot about collaboration in Franklin County. It's unbelievable. Yep. Uh, the collaboration you mentioned the bank, I mean, Greenfield Savings Bank, Greenfield Cooperative Bank, the banks they're always there, right Good in time. step with the, the local agencies that are helping people you know, with a variety of things. So we are so fortunate up here um, to have so many people who really want to help. So part of the response, you know, I, I thought about you several times throughout this crisis because, you know, people, when people want to help and people do want to help, a lot of times they want to offer manpower, you know, they want to go help in a, at a meal site or something like that. And this was different. You, you couldn't maybe have some of that happening. Right. Right. We're being extremely careful about who's on site where we have, um, as I said, most of our employees are working from home. They're working, but at mm -hmm. home, even our early education staff who are not working right now on site because we don't have kids in care, they are connecting with families every day, but we're keeping them safe and while we figure out how we reopen in, in, the, in the proper way for kids, families, and, and health and safety. So, yeah, um, but I can't, you know, the community has been incredibly generous. We set up a, what we thought would be a small fund to help with things like, you know, back rents or things like that. And we have gotten um, an incredible um, a, a number of donations that are going to help us. For instance, I need to move the pantry out of the uh, cafeteria because it can't stay in the cafeteria forever because school is going to return eventually right so we're identifying another site in greenfield to move the that pantry to that's bigger um uh, we've raised some money that will i can i can use to help make that move right we we have raised some money that helps us buy food because while the food bank sells us food at an incredibly discounted cost it's still we're still buying it right mm -hmm. and uh, so, uh, and, and I'll say that the community has dug really deep into their pockets and given us um, that kind of support. And the other thing that's happened is that um, the Western Mass um, Community Foundation has been very supportive. And the North, Northern Always. Western County Community Foundation has been very supportive for the North Guabin community. So we've seen an outpouring of generosity. That means that I'm less worried, although I'm still very worried, when the courts open and evictions can happen, I'm really worried about people's back rents, right? So right. right now I'm really encouraging people to call us, even in the absence of an eviction notice and tell us what's going on and so we can help them think through the problem, right? Yeah, that's and, great advice. And if, you know, and we are gratefully accepting any donations that anybody gets gives to us. And I can tell you right now, they're going to go back directly invested right here in this community to help support people in their in the lives that have been interrupted. And, and people who are, you know, the people that for many low wage workers, many people who may have used our services in other ways, but are not, you know, maybe they were in our childcare center, but people who pride themselves on on going to work every day and paying their bills and who are struggling now with that, right? Um, and we, we were already working with so many people who that is the case, but we're reminding that we can be here for some other help for them too, right? Right. We can help them with well, things. And you touched upon something that's been, you know, concerning to me is that at a time of such incredibly great need, 
it's also so much harder for organizations like yours and and you mentioned United Way and I'm sure Big Brothers Big Sisters and all the other ones to do their fundraising um, both because you can't hold the physical events that you normally would and mm -hmm. I, I know that there's been several of our larger fundraisers in Franklin County that have had to be postponed or maybe went virtual because of this so what does community ha action have coming up for fundraisers or anything that people um, can participate in? You know, we're, we never did a kind of a signature fundraiser. That hasn't been something that we've done. We, we've always, um, you know, we've been, we've had good funders that, that we have, I mean, the organization's uh, 55 years old now, uh, founded during the, you know, started in the war on poverty in 1964. Um, one of our earliest programs was, was youth employment uh, and, and Head Start. So we've been here for a long time and we haven't depended so much on fundraised money, but um, right now it is an important part of what we need to do. So we've been mostly um, ask, asking people to go look at our website, go see what we're doing and then think about whether or not we're the kind of place that you want to donate your money. Um, we also really love it when people follow us on Facebook or follow us mm -hmm. on and they can hear about the things that we're doing uh we have a just a wonderful uh development and communications person jesse dean who's been active in all of this um fundraising and done a remarkable job connecting us with the community and so people understand the kind of things that we're doing and um community action is um you know our uh, we talk about for the community we we you know in in the community and for the community. We offer access and opportunity and those things build the community, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we don't exist without the support of that broad community. Um, and right now, it's been incredible how people are stepping up. It's just incredible. Uh, I can't even, you know, it's, it's, it's really, and the other thing I wanna say is I was on a call yesterday. Uh, we've been doing Zoom calls with our staff. Uh, we uh, the first one we had close to 300 yesterday's was a little smaller because people are doing other things right but we've been doing them once a week and um people want to people are told us what they were doing how they're working remotely and how, how they're connecting with people how they're connecting mm -hmm. with family, which was great and you could also tell how much they want to come back and work in the community in person and mm -hmm. with each, right so we're looking forward to that, but what we're going to do is take away the lessons of this time, right? That we can, we if we can make it through this thing, we really, right? We can, we can do it. And um, we were fortunate that we had the kind of technology that allowed us to spin up a remote operation quickly and stay remote. And uh, we have an amazing tech staff that went out and made sure that everybody had the equipment they needed. And um, Somebody calls me on my, my office phone and, and I it, I can have it ring wherever I am. Those kinds of things that right. happened five years ago. I don't know what we would have done. So the technology has, you know, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot of things about our families and how resilient they are in the face of this. We've also learned how individuals and families in our community, despite the resilience, are still suffering through this, this challenge, right? So... We're here to, to the extent we You're, can. You've always been there to help. It's really, um, it's really comforting, Claire, to have your agency oh, um, so you. close by and to have you at the head of it. And I'll give a shout out to Jesse Dean as well, who happens to be on the board of directors for the chamber. Um, and we're really happy about that. Um, so. You know, thank you, Claire, so much for doing what you're doing. I would certainly urge people who are listening who, who might, you know, want to, they're looking for a way they can help. Um, and, it, and there's so many broad different ways you can help through community action. So I, I would encourage you, as Claire said, to look at the website and, um, and think about how you, you know, how you can help your neighbors through this. Um, you know, I, I f I'm hoping the worst is behind us in terms of the time that we need to be um, actually shut down, but I think we're far from out of the woods right. in terms of how we recover and how long it will take for some people and families to get back on their feet. So an agency like yours is just going to be 
um, extremely critical over the next really couple of years. Um, it always, always has been, but I think there's going to be a, a, a real urgent need over the next couple of years while people try to rebuild. And, and you know, you've talked about back rents. It takes a long time to recoup that for families. That's that's a tough that's a tough spot to be in. Back rents, and then the other thing is, while well, the utility companies aren't shutting off the utilities, eventually they're right. going to want money. So. I, I guess I'm a broken record here. If you are backing up on your bills, give us a call. The other thing right. we're talking to people about is for it, in this time when connectivity is so important, if you are backed up on your on your um, internet, call us. We can help you try to figure that out. If, if you're backed up in your your other utilities, your sewer or water bill, and, and, and the, the city or town is threatening you with a shutoff, talk to us, right? We want to make sure people are safe in their homes, safe and, and connected in their homes. Right. And it's, as I said, it's so, what's so great is that there, there's not help with just that one thing, but if you're back on rent, you might be struggling to pay for food as well. That's um, correct. It's Thanks. more yeah. than likely that, that you're struggling with that as well. And so, you know, here's one agency that can, can really help you with all of that. So, um, yeah, Claire, we'll, a million. We'll connect the dots. Connect the dots, exactly. I, I, I miss seeing you yeah, <laughs> up at the office. Person. We'll be in person soon, I hope. Very soon, Whatever very I'm soon. Asking, but... I know, for yeah. now, yeah. Um, Claire, thank you for everything that you do um, before this, during this, after this, forever. Yeah. You are absolutely committed to, you know, ending poverty and and ripping down all of those barriers for people that keep them from um you know moving forward getting a new job all of those things it's really just just um you're a great agency and i i, I thank you and i'm glad to have you as a friend and a colleague so you too. and and we're proud members of the franklin county chamber and i'm so glad that you're there it's uh and it's great to see the chamber engaged in this way during this time when we're all far you know far apart and you you are acting as the connector which is so important you know our chamber we are so proud to have so many nonprofits as members uh and it's it's really just such a great great thing and and as i said franklin county just i don't know does it really really well up there really really well um that collaboration and and everything so we'll get through this it'll be a little tough but we will get through this so claire a million thanks great to see thanks. your face and we'll see you soon good see you soon thank you